So, you've bought an Apple Watch. You're taking it out running, it's doing an okay job, but you just wish it could do that a little bit more. That's certainly how I was feeling after a few months of running with it. Then I came across an app that completely changed that for me. In stepped Work Outdoors. Kia ora, Daniel here. Today I'm wanting to talk about my favourite running app, probably my favourite app for the Apple Watch, Work Outdoors. This isn't an ad, it's not sponsored, I have nothing to do with the crew behind the app. Let's be real, my channel has two dozen subscribers. It's just a great app and I don't think enough people know about it. So what is it? Well, it's an activity tracker, not dissimilar to Apple's own workout app, but it can do much more, so much more. Let me start off by saying I have no issues with Apple's workout app. You can track runs, walks, workouts, you name it. You can change the display up and some of the metrics. And for most people, it's all they'll ever need. But if you're anything like me and you want to use the Apple Watch as a training tool and not just an activity tracker, then you might be looking for something with a bit more heft. And if that is the case, then I can wholeheartedly recommend Work Outdoors for the following three reasons. Reason number one, customization up the wazoo. Like I said, Apple Workout does let you make a few changes, but with Work Outdoors, if you can see it, chances are you can change it. You can make changes on the watch itself, but it is a lot easier on an iPhone. Let's take a look. So first things first, let's open up the app. I've got to swipe down and search for it. I'm trying a new thing with using my phone, like, you know what, it doesn't matter. Let's open that up, straight away that takes us to most recent workouts, but we can skip over that and jump to our second option down the bottom, which is screens. Now, in here, every activity available on Work Outdoors, of which you can see there are many of them, can be customised to look and feel exactly the way you want them to. Some of these up the top, running, hiking and surfing, I've all used regularly, and these are customised to look exactly the way I want. But let's jump into running and we can take a look at that customisation. Now as I say, I have this set up the way I like. I have my overview page with distance, time, pace and heart rate, and then a couple other screens that give me more information on my heart rate and my pace. But let's say I'm planning on doing some running in the hills and I want to start tracking my elevation. Now I could add an elevation metric to one of these cards, but I have them set up the way I like. So instead let's add a new screen with this plus button up here. And that's given us a fourth screen down the bottom. Now we can change the profile, uh, we'll change that to elevation, this will change up a few of the defaults and it's a good way to keep tabs on which profiles you're using. And out here we can amend the layout and the text size, but if we tap on the screen itself we can go in and access all of the customization options, of which there are many of them. 357 available metrics for each screen. As with before, we can change up the layout and the font size if we don't want a map because we already have one. We could uh, add a bar down the side, make it a card with a bit less information or a bit more information. We can change the text size. Now, making it bigger will make it easier to read, but you'll have less metrics. Or if you want to make it tiny, uh, you can have everything on one screen. To be honest, given the size of the Apple Watch, I don't know who's getting much use out of having this much data on one screen. But you know what? If you want everything in one place, so you don't have to swipe through all the screens like it's, I don't know, Tinder for Apple Watch, you can do that. I kind of liked how this one here was looking. We'll go with that middle font. And that's looking all right. I think this has pulled through some data from one of my hiking screens, because this is set up pretty much the way I'd want it. We have absolute altitude, ascent, a wee graph showing elevation change, and I always like to have distance and time down the bottom. But let's just say for argument's sake, as well as ascent, we want to see descent. We'll swap out this one here by going to categories, elevation, and we've got a few filters, but we can see right here, we've got the descent option. It's looking good. We'll hit save on that, head back, save again, go back to all of our screens, and then next time we go to use a run on Work Outdoors, all four of these screens should be available to us. Now, the customization options don't end at the screens page, not by a long shot. If we jump into settings, there's a load more that we can tinker with in here. If we go to things like alerts, 
For every individual activity, we can change up how we're alerted by our watch. For hiking, do we want to be alerted every mile or every five kilometers when we ascend a thousand foot? For running, do we want to be buzzed when our cadence hits a certain number of steps per minute? We can change up commands, export options, which file type. Do we want it to upload directly to Strava? We can amend heart rate zones, maps, uh, the theme, what colors do we want to use that might make it more readable. We can change the units. Do we want metric or imperial or if we're in the UK, a weird mix of both for some reason. We can amend the voice. If we've got alert set, what accent do we want? How fast should he speak and at what volume? And if we go into other settings, we can see things like automatic water lock, this brilliant feature here, periodic saving, where it'll save the workout consistently, meaning that if your watch dies, you don't lose all of your data, saved me more than once. Right through to tiny little details like do we want a countdown at the start of the workout and how long do we want that countdown to be visible for? So yeah, a lot of customization. Maybe a little bit too much for some people, they might find it a bit overwhelming. But if you know what information you want to see and when you want to see it, it'll be perfect for you. If you've ever been on a run and thought to yourself, boy it sure would be good to know what my maximum speed was during that last kilometer versus what it is now and also what time the sun sets tonight, you can do that. I mean, not right there and then, but when you get home, you can customize your watch face and you'll have it for next time. Reason number two, breadcrumb navigation. Let's cast our minds back to June 13, 2020. I was out for a long run in the Lomond Hills Regional Park, Scotland. And if you see this section here, that's me getting lost in a very thick fog. August 17, 2019, the Berwickshire Coastal Path. Here's me getting lost on someone's farm near Eymouth. Needless to say, I'm a very big fan of having a map on my wrist. Now, this obviously isn't anything new. A lot of GPS watches have this functionality, but it is sorely lacking on the Apple Watch. With Work Outdoors, I create my route on Strava. I export it, airdrop it to my phone, and just like that, it's there in the route section. It's also worth mentioning that if you've got a Wi-Fi only Apple Watch, not cellular, you can download sections of the map so that your watch has all the map data if you're leaving your phone behind. Now, I don't necessarily recommend that, especially on long runs, but that's a discussion for an upcoming video. And reason number three, schedules. Now, this is something I've only just recently started using, and again, nothing new here, but a welcome addition to work outdoors and something I've been finding really, really helpful. If we jump back into settings and go to interval schedules, you can see I've got a bunch of these already made. Now, something I've been struggling with a bit recently is managing my pace. I find if I'm not paying attention, I end up running faster than I want to and out of breath. Now, these schedules can help me to manage that. We jump up the top to the plus button, we can create a new one. It'll offer us some templates. Let's just go with a simple schedule. And by default, this is offering us a warm up and a cool down for a kilometer each at a six minute 30 to five minute 30 per kilometer pace. I think that's about right, so let's just play with this middle section here. At the moment, it's fast for five minutes. We want it to be steady. I don't think this actually does anything, but it's just a useful way to keep tabs on which intervals you're using. For the time, if we want maybe a half hour run, let's just change this to about 20 minutes, plus warm up and cool down. And here we can choose the target type. Now, if I'm going to start managing my pace, there's a number of ways I could do this. I could do it with heart rate, with speed, but in this instance, let's just select pace. And this will give us some parameters to work with it. By default, it's given us target slowest, six minutes per kilometer, and target fastest, five minutes per kilometer. And what that means is if I run slower than six minutes per kilometer or faster than five minutes per kilometer, it'll buzz me and tell me that my pace has fallen out of the target range and it'll help to keep me within that zone where I'm running at my happiest. As with before, we can amend the screen, change up some of the metrics. It's given us uh, interval remaining by default, as well as pace current and interval average. Anything I think I'll change is that one because I like to see the distance. And then the other thing we can amend is the alerts. Do we want the interval name at the start? Not really. Uh, duration, I know it's 20 minutes, but the target, I have a habit of forgetting that, so I'll leave that one switched on. Now if we go back to schedule, back to schedules again, it'll tell us to save. 
And that's been sent to our watch, so next time we go to start a run, all we do is hit the three dots, go to interval schedules, and there's our brand new simple schedule. Warm up for one kilometer. And that is three reasons why I think Work Outdoors is an essential app for data-driven runners using the Apple Watch. The customization, the convenience of a wrist-based route map, and the interval schedules take the watch from a simple workout tracker to a full-blown training tool. Personally, this app helped me train for and track my first ultramarathon last September, and that's something that I'll discuss in an upcoming video. Admittedly, full-on running watches from Garmin or Suunto or whoever have all of these features and many, many more. But to be able to enjoy some of these features alongside all of the other smartwatch features of an Apple Watch is kind of amazing. And I should mention, it's only six quid. If you do give it a try, or if you're already using Work Outdoors, let me know in the comments below what do you think of it so far. Is there a particular feature that sold it to you? Has it saved you too from getting lost on someone's farm near Eymouth? I'd love to hear from you. And if you enjoyed this video, I've got more Apple Watch and running related content on the way very soon, so I'd love if you could hit that subscribe button. Anywho, that's this video over. We are on the Bemore 12 today, low tide. Thanks very much for stopping by. Slant it.